So Luke, um, here we are at Flame. Tell us a little bit about what um, S&P Global Commodity Insights thinks about the European gas market at the moment. So where, where do you see things going from here? Yeah, thanks Stuart, it's great to be here at um, Flame and uh, certainly a fascinating time uh, to be here surrounded by um, a group of market experts. And obviously it's been a massively tumultuous period for global gas markets. Prices have been very volatile, um, especially through the past winter. And uh, really over the last month or two since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we have seen somewhat of a dislocation between market prices and fundamentals. We've seen the emergence of a substantial risk premium um, in the European curve. And, and that's come at the same time as the European storages have started to, to reduce or erode that deficit that had built up uh, last summer and into early winter. So fundamentals do feel a bit more bearish, but the big question here, of course, is where are Russia pipeline flows uh, going to go uh, in the next month, of course, we, we have some deadlines coming up that are going to be very important, but also uh, over the course of the next few years, really depending on whether we see an orderly or a disorderly um, diversification away from Russian pipeline gas can present you with two very different pricing scenarios uh, for the months and years ahead. Sure, and we've seen, haven't we, that LNG has come to Europe in record volumes over the past few months, as over the winter especially, they've, you know, they've been at record highs, haven't they? So. Does S&P Global Commodity Insights see that as a trend continuing LNG into Europe at these strong levels? Yeah, I, I think, as you say, the, the diversification and flexibility in global LNG supply over the last few months has been especially notable. We've seen record LNG deliveries to Europe um, in January and then a new record actually set last month in April to Western Europe. Um, and we've been at seasonal record highs for about four months in a row now. And, and that, of course, is coming as high prices are leading to fuel switching and demand destruction in Asia. Now, when we look ahead to the coming summer and, and, and the rest of the year, it does feel as though stronger LNG deliveries are, are going to be sustained. Really, the question is how strong is. And I think with that in mind, there's two things to consider. One is, of course, what happens with European prices. And um, based on where we are now, if Russia flows continue, you maybe think the European prices will correct lower. And, and that correction lower is a recognition that we need to create demand in Asia, we need to create demand in Europe if Russia pipeline gas continues to balance. Um, but on the opposite end of that, if we do see significant further disruption to Russian pipeline flows, then LNG deliveries to Europe are likely to continue to trend at record levels. Now, the final caveat I'd maybe put on this as well is this is of course of having a big impact on the Asian market. Um, uh, in more ways than one. Of course, in China, we are already seeing uh, at present downstream demand is being weighed on by the, by the COVID lockdowns. But in other markets, in South Asia, for example, we're seeing this lack of LNG and the expensive LNG have a serious impact on downstream energy consumption. It's causing significant economic difficulties. Yeah, you talked about Asia there. And just, just lastly then, on the, the spot LNG price, so the, the Platts uh, JKM, um, benchmark price has been still at sustained highs, hasn't it, the last few yeah. months, still at $20 or more. Do you think that that price strength can continue through the rest of 2022 or will spot Asian LNG prices, the JKM, start to come back down, do you think? Yeah, well, we've seen something really interesting over the last month or so already with JKM, and that is JKM has actually dislocated from TTF. What do I mean by that? Well, JKM is now at a $7 discount to TTF prices, to European prices. We've never seen that before. And, and that is a relic of the fact that there is so much LNG coming to Europe that Europe simply cannot monetize it all right now. There is not the regasification capacity. Um, and the fact we've run up against these regasification capacity constraints means we've got volume offshore, which is having to discount to try and find a home, either into discounted markets in the UK, in Spain, or to try and find buyers again in Asia. But What's particularly interesting is that even as LNG prices have dropped almost $10 um, from the end of March to, to early May, we really haven't seen the emergence of much buy side activity in Asia. Um, and that tells us that maybe prices in Asia need to go lower if we want to bring back substantial demand uh, in South Asia and China. And, and of course, the other question which we, we which touched upon briefly is um, what is the state of the macroeconomic backdrop, especially in China, which has historically been a major spot importer 
Um, if we do want to see JKM find some resistance and buy side demand return, China's going to be critical to that. Um, but for now, certainly, it seems as though JKM could drift lower um, in, in the months ahead. Yeah, well, there are a lot of interesting things to look out for. Thanks ever so much, Luke, for that. Brilliant. Thanks, Stuart.